Every move that we made in the studio, everything that we did, I felt that that time was made for a good reason, and not necessarily as, as an ego extension of Norman Petty. I don't really believe, honestly, that I ever pushed what I wanted to do on, onto Buddy, because not me, not Jerry Allison, not you would be able to convince Buddy Holly to do anything that he, in the end, didn't want to do. He was as stubborn a critter as I've ever met in my life. <laughs> this is the building next door to the studio. It was his dad's garage. And uh, he uh, took the top part of it and built this room for an echo chamber. And uh, he had Mr. Holly and Travis and Larry come uh, over and uh, put this tile down. And that was to increase the reverberation. How he got his sound back over there was he put speakers in the place had microphones in front of him and whatever he was running through the speaker if he wants wanted echo at that time he would turn that microphone on and it would go back into the studio one time the boys were recording and uh, some uh, cricket sound came through i'm not sure whether they kept hearing the cricket or not but uh, it came through right at the end of a recording and well after they hit their last chord and the cricket came in they left it on the record. We did a lot of different things, like on every day. Uh, we play, I played on my knees just when we were sort of working on the sound side and what order to do it in uh, to keep it quieter so everybody could hear what Buddy was doing on the guitar. I was just like sort of playing along on my knees. And Norman Petty said, I don't, I don't remember exactly how it came about, but he said, let's try that. So he just like Mike, just playing the knees like that. And on, uh, a song called Well All Right, just like all the way through, just played the, laid the cymbal, I think this very cymbal on the floor, and just played. Well, all right, so I'm being too. And you know, no other drums on it. And um, then uh, Party It Off, which would be cut it close before that Buddy Knox and Rhythm Orchids. Uh, they used a cardboard box on that, so when we started to do Not Fade Away, we said, hey, that sounded good then, so let's do it again. And I'll show you how it sounds, because I just emptied the box last night. And I'll show you how it sounded like this. Well, all I want is a party, y'all. Be with me when I'm feeling wild. Be with not pay away, sound like this. Well, I'm going to tell you how it's going to be. You're going to give your love to me. something very different. It was that rockabilly pop. I don't know what the heck it was at that time. It was something that hit us between the eyes. And, we, uh, and then I think Bob should pick it up there because uh, I wasn't in sales. At the, I was just delighted that we had a hit. And well, every, I, the cockroaches came out of the wall. Everybody, <laughs> everybody wanted it. Everybody wanted him. Everybody wanted his songs. Uh, and then, of course, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the next release was Peggy Sue. How's that different from other guitarists? Well, um, other guitarists will just play, uh, you know, a single string or, you know, uh, I can't play like Chuck Berry, but, the, you know, Chuck Berry played this kind of stuff. And that kind of stuff, you know, just on two strings or something. You talked about um, him playing rhythm lead, not conventional lead. And how is Buddy different then? He played on all the strings, you know. He played a lot of downstrokes too, like every everything was hard, you know, like you can do the same thing like down and up, you know, but Buddy played all downstrokes. And... That's sort of how Peggy Sue went on the road and for TV, like live performances. And it's a lot different from it. Started out, started out as Cindy Lou, and like a Latin, uh, I think it was maybe a rumba beat when like. Cindy Lou, Cindy Lou, oh, my heart yearns for you, oh. Anyway, uh, that 
there was an awful lot of Latin things around there, and so we finally figured out to do it when we recorded it in the studio with uh, paradiddles just on one drum. And uh, Norman Petty, the engineer, flipped it in, flipped the sound in and out of the echo chamber and changed the volume, or I think increased the dBs. Anyway, just played it on one drum like this. <laughs> to a show of stars and we knew that they were going to join the show that was a Sunday or something and they were all down in the basement of this big arena where we were playing the three of them wearing these gray suits you could tell they bought in Texas but they had grown up together they were like literally like brothers they were wonderfully friendly they were friendly they were very very into the, the they had a, even a kind of a Texas language we didn't even understand at that time a little a lot of uh, things they would talk about and things it was really kind of a little alien to Phil and I, you know. Well, they were, well I, just the way they, their sense of humor and everything. We learned, we, you know, we became such friends that, uh, you know, over the years, it just became part of our life, you know, the way they were. They were a group, too, which they, they were self-contained, which Phil and I weren't even at that time. So it was really kind of a camaraderie there, you know, the beginning of rock and roll. When we became friends, we started going shopping together. And Phil and I had, I think, been in New York a couple of times more than uh, Buddy and uh, J.I. and uh, Joe B. had. And so we started all shopping at the same place. And I think if you notice over the pictures, you'll notice some of the clothes was get similar, you know. the uh, And then it was, everything had a belt in the back and even little hats and uh, <laughs> long rows of buttons up your coats. And it was called the Ivy League look. It was so much to see and we hadn't really ever been anywhere, none of us. That was quite a, quite a thrill. Go to dinner, you know, we all got into that real quick. <laughs> and shopping, <laughs> you know, well, and things like that. And have a bit of money to spend, you know, and you're in New York City, you know, and in L.A. <laughs> Every day it's getting better, getting more cards and getting more letters. Everybody loves to tune our way. Hey, hey, hey. Everybody loves to tune our way. The first tour we went on in 30, in 30 days, we'd play 30 places. And there was, uh, there was, there were three days off, I think, for us on the whole, like a 17-week tour we booked. And the first uh, first three weeks were like in theaters, like a week at a time, and after that was one nighters. And we went to Canada, from Canada to uh, California, and back to Canada, and play all, all we play. We only missed like four or five states on that tour. 